New, new, new. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this thing. And here we go. All right. So starting up, we've got the YPI. This is from uh, Pycom.io. It's a British company, and they basically took a CC3200, a which is a, a Cortex M4 microcontroller with Wi-Fi from TI, and they kind of wrapped it up into this nice little bucket here. It'll uh, breadboardable. Looks like an XB, but it's breadboard friendly. It's not um, two millimeter pitch. And what's really neat is it basically runs a web server with Python, so you can like basically telnet to it, and like you can control pins, like read sensor data. Um, do all sorts of stuff with it, and it's uh, it's in Python. And we've got a couple things that use JavaScript. We've got like a Spurino, and uh, we've got a Micro Python board that runs in the ESP8266. But I thought, you know, maybe people want a slightly more powerful processor, so the YPI might be a good option for them. So we carry this thing, check it out. Um, this is just yeah, this is just the module itself, and uh, comes with a chip antenna. But you can also connect an external antenna. And uh, I have it plugged into the helper board here, but you can just carefully remove it. Um, and it's all, I don't know what this copyright's all about, but uh, this uh, got a JTAG programming thing down here, probably like a four layer board, um, a nice tin, reset, uh, LED, and then yeah, you can plug it into this evaluation board. And the eval board gives you a micro SD card, so you can have like file storage. It has um, charging LEDs. I think it maybe has a sensor or two on it as well. Um, it's also got a button and uh, makes it much easier to connect to. Also has a USB serial port. You can actually connect through USB serial as well to just like type it's on the console. You like just type into the Python um, REPL. But mm -hmm. um, it's designed initially to be done completely wirelessly. So you, you write your code completely over the air. Okay. And then as far as um, the next product that is related to this. Yeah, the board. And this is the, the you know, the PyMaker add-on board. So um, plug it in. This Actually, apparently this is all open source hardware. So you, you know, you can build your own, which is why it's a little bit odd that there's a copyright, but um, and not an open source hardware logo, but it is open source hardware. I believe this was a Kickstarter. Hmm. And so that was part of the deal of it, was it, they would release all the files. So they're all on GitHub if you want to uh, check out the design files for this as well. Okay. All right. So great um, if you want to do embedded in Python. Okay. And then next up. The analog joystick. This is a, yeah, just go to the next one. This is what was confusing. This is a small analog joystick that has two potentiometers. So compared to a lot of joysticks, which are like tactile switch, like they have a switch on, left, right, up, down. This has two potentiometers and then a kind of a little gantry type thing going on inside, you can see here, with return springs, and uh, it's very small and cute, and um, you can use it for, you know, anything that has two analog inputs can read the position, and uh, it's great for, zoom in, it's great for any kind of control, because you get like, you know, a nice range, it's got a, a nice rubber gasket here for some uh, protection, and then you just get these, Two potentiometers, connect power and ground to either side, read the center pin, and you're good to go. It's a very basic tool, but uh, a good component if you are making an interface. And you know, again, a lot of joysticks, arcade joysticks, they just have like click up, click down. They don't have ranging. And um, so if you want to have more precision control, it's going to be really great for you know either gaming, if you want to do uh, emulation of gaming that you, that has some sort of analog joystick or just a control interface. It's a little bit more intuitive than a mouse for some things. And then you can see here there's uh, two return springs and an XY and then like a, a, a ball socket down there to kind of keep it floating. And you can change out the springs if you want to change the strength of the um, return. But it feels pretty good. It's like a nice joystick. Okay. All right. And next up. This back. You ready? Yes. Okay. This is some terminal blocks. This is a set of a 12 pin and 16 pin terminal blocks specifically for Feather. I wanted to get another Feather accessory out. So um, with this, very easy, you solder it onto your um, Feather. For most, I would solder it from the bottom because that way it's, you know, it's easy. It doesn't block the, the pin connections and uh, doesn't block any components. 
and then um, you can connect wires to it. So it's quite simple, but it basically allows you to add terminal blocks without going to, you know, we have a terminal breakout, but it's quite large. This is very compact. So you can go to the overhead, I can, I can show it off real fast. So, so this is it with a uh, Huzzah feather. So it's if you, sturdy. Yeah, if you just want to have like, you know, it, 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 you solder it in, it's quite strong, but um, you just use a small screwdriver, you can connect wire sensors. You know, it's not good if you're doing a complicated project, but if you only have to connect like a, you know, a single door sensor, it's a two wire thing, it's easier than soldering and it gives you some flexibility. There's some modules, like, you know, fingerprint modules where you just, there's just wires, you can just connect them up and uh, you don't even need a breadboard, you don't have to solder. I mean, after you put the terminal blocks on and uh, it's much, very reconfigurable. Yeah. So it may be good for IoT projects or uh, reconfigure it reconfigurations. So you get one of each. Works okay. with any of our feathers. All right. Next up. I believe this is some type of gas sensor. This is a gas sensor. This is cool. This is actually our first gas sensor we've got to make yeah. a new category. We got asked a bunch of times, but there wasn't something that was Yeah, it wasn't very it wasn't good. It wasn't that great. But I think actually this, this sensor one. is pretty good. So this is we're late to the party, but we're We're dressed to kill. Dressed to kill. This is the SGX Mix five five two four. It's kind of a, it's a multi-use sensor, but it ha you know, can take a whole bunch of different gases, which is nice. It can do carbon monoxide, uh, volatile organic gases, and alcohol. Now, you know, when you're detecting alcohols, um, it can detect a couple different alcohols. It can also detect like ammonia. Um, check out the data sheet. It has the parts per million of everything in the detection and, and how much the resistance will vary. But it doesn't tell you which one it detected. It, it can just detect these volatile organic compounds or common mm. monoxide, it doesn't tell you like, I detected this much ammonia and this much uh, gasoline, right? All it does is tell you that there is th this There's gas. something I detect. There's just something I detect, but that's all these gas sensors do anyways. There's no sensor that I know of that is so specific because the, the way the sensor works, it gets activated by any of these Okay. Gases. Do you want to uh, go to the overhead and show this thing off? Yeah, so this is the sensor and uh, I have it connected up to an Arduino. You power it with five volts and then um, you have an analog output. It has a single analog output. Basically, it's a resistor divider. The resistance changes, and again, check the data sheet for the exact resistance to um, parts per million. Do you need flow over it, someone asked? Well, you know, you want the gas to enter into the little holes here, so you can, there is actually a little bit of like, you don't want the, the gas to like, if, if it's um, alcohol, you don't want to actually soak it. Okay. So you want, you want it to pass through. Check the app note on using it for, um, you can use it to like make a breathalyzer and alcohol, like an alcohol alcohol sensor, like fun type of alcohol, not just like, you know, so methane. So you're gonna use this. These this are, is not fun time these alcohol. These are stencil wipes. This is stencil wipes, and they're they're soaked in um, isopropyl alcohol. So this is an easy way for us to, to test it. While um, if you're under 21, I did I do have a vine of me testing it with some whiskey, which works quite well too. Um, so this LED, and this is a little bit bright. But it's actually it's dim because it has a, a slight um, analog voltage no matter what. And then um, if you put this next to it, it'll actually get quite bright, as you can see. It's detecting can we, the gasoline. So uh, I can alcohol. I can I blow on it and see what happens? You can, but right now it's you know it's it's dim because there's no. I mean, unless you just had a drink. No, I haven't. I miss drinking so much. No, this won't this won't really do. I mean, you can, but it won't. I know because. In case there's any question about the moon landing, oh, they high zeros, yeah. or Phil's drunk. Okay, go ahead, yeah. So like, I'll just yes, go on. Okay. Yeah, see, it's getting dimmer, actually. And then, yeah. and then you put the alcohol wipe near it, and it will, and there, you know, this area now has a little bit of alcohol all over it. So it's, um, it's gonna fluctuate, but you just basically yeah. read the analog voltage off of it. Um, so, you know, great for common, carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds. Um, air purity, stuff like that. Uh, gotta mention, this is not for medical or safety use. No. Uh, don't use this, uh, you know, to, as a carbon monoxide detector to um, keep you from dying because it's, it's a sensor, but we just don't guarantee it for this purpose. This is for educational, hobbyist, fun time use. Um, all sensors must be calibrated. These are not calibrated sensors. And we don't do calibrate. That's why, you know, that's the difference between um, a $15 sensor and, you know, the, the $200 uh, breathalyzer is that calibration procedure, which yeah. we do not do. I predict we're going to put bold text on the product page over and over we and did. over and yeah. over and over. 
No, because people said they're like, oh, I want to use this for like my Kickstarter product, like, you know, keep your baby from dying. And I'm like, no, yeah. don't do that. We're There's not. There's a whole section on Kickstarter no. about saving babies. Okay. Don't do that. All right. Okay, so that's the uh, gas sensor. But a great gas sensor other than the fact that uh, you shouldn't use it to um, okay. make a product for saving babies. The star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, is the new Flora. Yes, it's a slight update, but it is an update. Slight? It's a massive update. Okay, there's, okay it's a lovely update. Massive. And, um, massive emptiness. Jeez. Because the, the holes are bigger. Yeah, the holes are bigger. A feature is less. There's less of it. There's it's less true. of it. It's a little bit lighter. This one has much bigger pads, and the, the holes in the pads are much larger to make it work with alligator clips. Um, it still has a near pixel in the center. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. The components are the same. Um, the silk screen's been updated. It's a really lovely silk screen. Phil B um, did up a very nice looking font. And um, so you can see the text on the pins are much nicer. But you know, otherwise it works just as before, but you can use these alligator clips. And instead of like clipping on top of, you can click, uh, you can attach through. It's an idea that we got from Circuit Playground, because I was like, oh, you know what, I should just use this for all of the wearables. You can still sew it, but then it makes it easier to alligator clip, because a lot of people like to alligator It's like two it products up. in one now. Yeah, people like to alligator yeah. it up. So you can, you, get, you just get a better it's grip. It's sewable and clippable. Sewable and clippable. So there you go. Clip friendly. Nice. Okay. So that's the new product, Lydia. Yep. Oh, and we dropped the price too on the floor. We dropped the price too? Yeah. Oh my god, okay. It's a little bit easier to make and uh... Yeah.